Hey plant fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is part of my jungle and today I am talking to you about a plant that is really popular right now. But the question is, is it overrated or is it actually worth the hype? Like, should you spend your money on this plant? Like, what are the reasons why you even want the plant? Because I never recommend buying a plant just because it's trendy. You should always buy a plant because you actually like the plant, not because Instagram likes the plant or because it's being mass produced and it's everywhere and you just are bombarded with it and you feel the need to buy it because that happens to me all the time. So this is a plant that has been popping up everywhere that I go in my area. So a lot of the local nurseries have been getting more and more of the philodendron brantianum. And I see them going for a lot of money in some places and even online like for small cuttings. So the question is, is this plant actually really worth your money? Like is it worth the hype or is it overrated? So that's what I wanna to talk to you guys about today. I'm not in the best mood, you know what I mean? But we're doing it. We're doing it. I've got my tea, so we're fine. It's good. It's really good. Scent helps. Anyway, oh, I haven't really been keeping it a secret from you guys that I haven't been in the best headspace in the world, but I got to thinking about this plant and how much people respond to it when I when I show it and when they see it in my plant shopping videos. People are always like, oh my God, I want that plant or I can't believe the price of that plant where you are is so good and so on and so forth. So without further ado, I don't know what that even means. I'm going to show you my brandy that I've had for a while now. <laughs> this one I got, I think at, I don't remember, honestly, I think it might have been like flags or something along those lines somewhere in New Jersey. There's no label on it, but I have this one in the greenhouse. And she's like, she's kind of going crazy. <laughs> Should probably cut she's it. Super happy and super healthy. I definitely have noticed that these get thirsty. The leaves are pretty delicate, but I mean, they're stunning. So this one I think was somewhere between 20 and $25. And it was not this size when I got it. It was much smaller, but it was still a nice full pot of brandy. And then you would have seen when I went to Rosedale a couple of weeks ago, I picked up another one in the same size, actually in the same exact hanging basket for 26, I want to say, how much I paid for it. But I just, I thought it was really cute the way it was trailing. This one's more of a climber, but you didn't tell. Okay, I have it like um, attached to here and this one's a trailer. Lots of brandy. And honestly, it's becoming one of my favorite plants. This one looks stunning. This one lives in my southeast facing window, so it gets a lot of bright morning light. I don't see any sunburn so far to the leaves. It's been there for a few weeks. I'm thinking it's going to be okay in that bright spot, but we'll see as time goes on. Cause this one's in the in the greenhouse like right under like pushed to the corner and the grow light is like right here so she gets a lot of bright light too and she's she's doing fine the thing that i would say most about this plant is i i don't obviously i don't think it's overrated <laughs> because i have two of them but together i didn't pay more than 50 dollars for both of these plants like that's a lot of plant for the price so the one thing that I would really say is that if you want this plant because you like it, because the leaves are stunning and silvery, and I love silver variegation, if you love silver variegation and a heart-shaped leaf, I highly recommend this plant, but I do not recommend buying a plant that has four leaves for $50 because that's just silly. And honestly, I the first one that I bought was actually at Mossy Fern. You guys would have seen a long time ago on my channel. And it was in a little container. It didn't have a lot of leaves. And I paid like $45 for it. 
and let me tell you that thing just died i showed it to you guys actually in my plant haul video i'll link for you from over the summer and it was fine and then it declined really really fast and i went to go repot it thinking that maybe it just needed to be in a different medium because i didn't know what kind of soil they had it in so i found out that it really wasn't a very established plant at all it really was just a couple of rooted cuttings like semi-rooted cuttings shoved into a nursery container and then sold as an established plant sorry my phone was ringing so i just stopped talking and then i forgot what i was saying so i came to realize that it was not an established plant even though it was sold to me as an established plant for 45 dollars. so the whole thing died basically i still have it in rehab it is just a couple of stems with like some teeny tiny little leaves that are finally coming out. I have it in a plastic bag under a grow light. Like it is just not, it's, I'm doing everything. I, at first I thought this plant is really finicky. It's not worth the money. It's super overrated, blah, blah, blah. And then I, I got my hands on these and look at them. They're thriving. So I really honestly think that buying cuttings of this plant is tricky and that's coming from somebody who sells cuttings and is planning on selling cuttings of this plant but like i'm just trying to be honest with you guys like they're they're hard they're not easy like to establish or maybe it was just that one plant i haven't really tried again to root it on my own like i'm kind of terrified like everything i put into water just kind of like died so I don't really know. All I know is if you want this plant, I definitely recommend getting a more established plant. And if you want to buy cuttings of this plant off of me, please, please, dear God, know how to take care of them properly. Because I just don't, I haven't figured it out yet. I'm going to try. I'm going to try them in moss and see what happens. Because the ones in the greenhouse you could see already have tons and tons of aerial roots that I have actually gotten rid of a couple of of cuttings because they are significantly easier if they already have some of these um, aerial roots going on to root them it could use a trim I could definitely cut this long vine and try and <laughs> try and not kill these leaves the only other thing I want to mention about this plant too is that with this and with other philodendrons like this you'll notice kind of like when the sun comes through the leaves, it almost looks like little pinholes. And I found out recently that that is actually really normal for philodendrons because it happens a lot, especially on my micans. And I'm noticing it on some of these leaves too. And it might make you scared or nervous and have you thinking that the plant has a disease or there's something wrong with the leaf, but it's actually just like this, this natural process that they go through where I guess like some sort of like sap or something comes out of the leaves and like leaves these little marks on them so I can try and show you guys what I mean but if you know what I mean you know what I mean like if you've seen it on your on your philodendrons before like you know what I mean they look like somebody took like a little pin and like made all these little like dots on your leaves but they're not actually holes anyway so my advice to you if you want to get yourself a philodendron brantianum is to try and find one from a local grower if you can that is well established and if you have to buy it online i definitely recommend buying a plant that's been established um you're just gonna have a higher success rate with it and don't pay a crazy amount of money for this plant because it grows like a weed <laughs> and it's not it's really I'm making it sound more difficult to root than it probably is I've just I'm stressed out about it because of my first experience with the one I got and it just totally totally declined and I was like oh, what did I do to this plant because I'm always weary to get into like some of these more um pricey philodendrons but the highest I see like a basket that's going for is like $40, $45 and I wouldn't even pay that much for it. Yeah, that's my story, you guys. When it comes to care on this guy, like I said, it gets a lot of bright and direct, some direct light. I just don't give it like really harsh direct light because you will burn the leaves and you will lose the leaves for sure. It likes to be more moist 
than my other philodendrons. It's kind of like how I honestly, I feel like that about all the heartleaf philodendrons though. I feel like they dry out really quickly and they do not like to be dry for long because they will start dropping leaves like really, really quickly. The leaves will get sad. So my only advice to you guys would be not to let this thing dry out completely. You know what I mean? I know it's weird. It's hard to explain. Like, it doesn't want to be wet. Not necessarily even moist, but, like, when you can tell that that top layer is dry, girl, it needs water. Like, I don't even really let it get to the point where it gets that dry. This one gets dry really quickly. You can kind of tell it's a little bit more limp than this one, the leaves, because of it being right in that hot window there that gets all the sun, so... You can have it climb. This plant is epiphytic. It's got tons and tons of adventitious roots. So you could put it up on a moss pole, like I have this one climbing, or you can have it trailing, like I have this. They both look beautiful. I recommend getting one to climb and one to trail. <laughs> I can never have just one. When I like a plant, raise your hand if you like a plant and you end up buying multiples. I have a problem, so it's fine. This is one of my favorite house plants, though. So if you were to ask me, is this plant overrated a year ago, I probably would have said yes. It's not worth the money because on the market, they were much more expensive than they are now. But if you're asking me right now, I'd say no. Only if you're paying a lot of money. I mean, honestly, this I would even pay like for a plant this size, I would even pay like $30, $35 for because it is so much bigger than when I bought it. So you really kind of have to just know the value. I don't know why I keep doing that. Why does that, why is that a thing? Does anybody else just want to like be in there? Like want to be one with the plant. Can I just be a plant for a day? Like just lay in the sun and photosynthesize. Anyway, I'm going to stop being weird. <laughs> I don't know how to stop being weird. That's a lie, but I'm going to try. You should buy this plant if you can find it for a reasonable price. Do not overpay for a plant that is not established is really what I'm getting at because this plant is beautiful. And I plan on kind of going through some more of my plants that I have with you guys and having the same discussion, whether or not I think the plant is overrated and whether or not I think that it's worth your money and how much money you really should be paying for a plant like this. This one maybe I would consider paying a little bit more for because it's a larger plant, it has more leaves. Like just be smart about your plant purchases. I see these going for $25, $30 for this size pretty much everywhere. Please do not pay $45, $50, $60. I've seen some of them for like 50 bucks. This same exact size without even this much foliage. Be smart, be patient, because the price of this plant is coming down and it is more readily available. Or if you want me to find one for the giveaway, you guys, because I'm doing a giveaway soon in case you missed it, I hit 3K subscribers and I was supposed to do something when I hit 2K last year and I never did. So I'm doing it now. Plus it's getting warmer out, so it's easier for me to ship us some plants to you guys. So ship us some plants. Why do I say it like that? It's easier to ship us some plants in the spring. So I um I need to go because clearly I'm losing it. I haven't slept in a few days. I have, but it doesn't feel like it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm emotionally drained. So it makes me feel physically tired, even though I slept. So yeah, I have a lot of videos that are I'm working on right now. I have some plant shopping some big box store plant shopping coming at you guys. I just showed you one of the plants <laughs> that I picked up oh, what? while I was at Home Depot recently. So I'm going to hit you guys with that over the weekend. And then after that, we've got, I don't know, we've got some stuff going on. We've got more plant shopping. I'm going to talk more about like some strings, string of things, how I'm keeping my string of things alive because I struggled for a long time. And I know that a lot of you guys struggle too. So if you have any plant struggles,
feel free to leave them down below in the comments because it actually helps me get inspiration for videos when I get enough people asking me the same questions or having some of the same issues with the same plants. So I would love to help you guys keep your strings of things alive and I would also love to have a discussion about ficus because like some of them are thriving and some of them hate me and I feel like we need to talk about it. So if those are things that you're interested in, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video and looking at my massive brandy and me being weird, I hope this was helpful <laughs> at least. I don't even know. I feel like I'm talking in circles, but I think the major takeaway really is to just be aware of the value of this plant. Obviously, that's going to it's going to vary if you want the plant really badly. Like, I'm willing to pay a couple extra dollars for a plant if I really want it that badly. But I'm just saying, be careful out there, plant fam. There's a lot of people out there that are just, like, want to take all your money and give you, you know, some shitty little cuttings that are going to die. So, just be careful, okay? Make sure you trust your seller, like me, I hope. I hope you guys trust me as a seller. So anyway, I'm going to go. You should go favorite my Etsy shop, though. The link is in the description box below. I have a couple of cuttings in there now, still left over, but I've got a bunch more that I'm starting up for you guys that'll be ready soon. And yes, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and you want to see more like this. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And I think I covered all my bases. So, yeah. <laughs> I hope that I see you guys in the next one. And that I haven't thoroughly irritated you so much that you don't want to come back. <laughs> if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I love you. I love you. You know what to do. Leave me some hearts and um, I'll tell you how much I appreciate you. Okay. Bye. <laughs>